innovative, synergistic, and passionate. These are just three words that can be used to describe Jonathan Tisch. However, one word you will never find associated with him is typical. Indeed, there are many words that can be used to depict the multidimensional qualities of Jonathan Tisch. But relative to his accomplishments in the hotel and tourism industries, the word that best describes him is icon. Jonathan, thank you for being here. And Terry? What have you seen the uh, demise, that's maybe not a fair word to use, but the falling of the dollar to the euro doing? Is, is it helping? Uh, it's absolutely artists? helping. And one of the reasons that in New York City we're still running 85% occupancies on a base of 70,000 hotel rooms is because of the weak dollar. And I know that both candidates are out there saying that the dollar should be strengthened, and there are some reasons, uh, many reasons why it should be. But I will tell you, and I know that Philadelphia has benefited from an, in, a, an increase in international travel. A lot of it is due to the weak dollar. You stand in Times Square, you stand on Fifth Avenue, nobody speaks English anymore. It's great for business. It's wonderful for us as, as a nation to have these people see what we do and see who we are. But if the dollar gets stronger, it will have an impact in a negative way about the people who can afford to come to our country to damned visit. Damned if we do and damned if we don't. Absolutely. All right, we talked about the hospitality industry, and you mentioned there are four different hotels here, and each one is run differently, I'm assuming, with management techniques. You talk about, in running yours, the power of five. Now, just the term caught my ear. Uh, what is that, and how did you decipher that? Well, we, what we talk about is the power of partnerships. I was fortunate in my first book to discuss this issue. It was called The Power of We, Succeeding Through Partnerships. And in The Power of We, we, we talk about five different constituencies that you need to partner with to really create success. The book was written about six or seven years ago. It was an era where I didn't like picking up the newspaper and seeing stories about CEOs being hauled off in handcuffs of the Adelphias and the Tycos and the Enrons of the world. And I thought that the American business community was better than that. Mm -hmm. And that we needed to go from a decade of me to a decade of we, hence the title. And in the book, we, we talk about two very simple themes, about understanding that in today's world, that you can't be all things to all people. Nobody is good enough, smart enough, articulate enough to do it all themselves. And they have to surround themselves with people who complement their strengths and cover their weaknesses. And also understanding that in today's world that you can create success by counting on others. It's OK to want to be successful, but you have a responsibility to help other people achieve the same kind of success that you are trying to get in your life. So the partnerships that we talk about very quickly, very simply, First and foremost are your customers. My fellow hoteliers will appreciate that. We're nothing without the people that stay in our hotels, that have events like this in our hotels. The second group are our coworkers. I had a wonderful experience on a show that I did for the Learning Channel where I had a chance to be retrained in jobs that I've done since I was seven years old, but I hadn't done them since I was CEO of the company. So I got a chance on TV to be a member of the Bell staff, to be a housekeeper, to be a short order cook, and it was a remarkable ability at this point in my career to relearn these positions. I can sit in my office in New York City in the heart of Midtown Manhattan, make all the decisions I want about the future of Lowe's Hotels, but I'm not the one serving the food, I'm not making the beds, and there is going to be no success for senior management without the 7,500 people. It's very important to have a relationship with the community where you operate your businesses. The fourth group, and, and this is a perfect example of the fourth group, and that's partnering with your competitors. And people would say to me, why would I want to partner with a competitor? And the Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce shows you why you want to part your partner with your competitor. Under Mark's leadership, you're talking about issues that are important to the entire business community. Yes, you may be competitors. It doesn't matter. You don't have the resources to deal with every issue that's important. Let groups like the Chamber deal with it. Let groups like the Convention and Visitors Bureau do, deal with it, the marketing group. So partnering with your competitors is a great idea. Sure, I want the business that the Hyatt has, or the Ritz-Carlton has, or the Four Seasons has. And we'll compete on a certain level. But when it comes to bringing more people to Philadelphia, to fill all of our beds, sure. I want to work together. Rising tide floats all boats. Absolutely. How and do you tell if it's a good partnership? If it's successful, if it works, there, and, and, and there are ways to get out of partnerships that aren't working. You can tell immediately. You have to go in, though, with a keen understanding and be very clear about what everybody wants to accomplish. And I'm talking business partnerships and also community partnerships. 
Really have a discussion. What is your goal? What will you think at the end of the day you will look at and say, this is working for me? And also have a vision for how you're going to unwind it if it's not working. How do you decide how much you can contribute and what is the obligation to the neighborhood and to the community uh, uh, moralistically and I guess uh, business-wise successfully? Well, Manny mentioned it in, in his kind introduction, and I am a big believer that you can do good and do well at the same time. That theory was challenged for many, many years, and I think it's incumbent upon us as members of the business community to understand our relationship. I personally do not like the term giving back. I think it, it's, it, it lets people off the hook. It, it's sort of a, a one-time reaction to a need, and, and maybe I'm just too cynical for being in New York all these years. But I've seen too many people who write a check, put on a tuxedo, and they think that they've given back. Mm -hmm. Well, my terminology is understanding one's responsibility to the community. And in this era of shrinking budgets in terms of what we get from the national government, state government, local government, it becomes our responsibility even more. Now, the, the benefit to that is that you feel better as an organization. You articulate a vision for how you want to be a good neighbor. And then it can help you later on. In the hotel business, we have rooms like this that are used for weddings, for anniversaries, for bar and bat mitzvahs. And if somebody read that the Lowe's Hotels did an event and it helped the Red Cross of Greater Philadelphia, I like the fact that they're in the community, I'm going to have my daughter's bat mitzvah at the Lowe's Hotel. Sure. That's how you can do good and do well at the same time. you talk about your um, sense of responsibility regarding sustainability? That's a, a wonderful question and one that I think uh, any CEO or any business leader is dealing with right now. We're in the process of coming up with a plan that makes sense for us, but certainly the consumer is expecting some statement that you care about the environment, and certainly our kids are also expecting some statement. And the, the tricky part is when is trying to find the balance between what you can do in terms of your products, in terms of how you operate a hotel, and keeping it cost effective. The challenge that we face now as a business, as an industry, in this particular environment, it's, it's true any time you're running a business, but especially now with lower revenues on the horizon, is how do you stay profitable? Our expenses are going up, energy is through the roof, our human resources are becoming more expensive, uh, it's becoming very expensive to operate a hotel. You, if you add over that the layer of what it's going to cost to become more sustainable, it can make you unprofitable. And you've got to find that balance between what's right for the environment, what's appropriate for the community, but also understand that you're running a business. When you're asked a, a very uncomfortable question about something about your hotel that may or, not, may, or may not be true. You've got to be diligent to try to protect your image in the blogosphere. And people are going to go on and they're going to say things about you that may or may not be true. And it's very important that somebody in your organization is always monitor what's being said in the ether about your company. And that if you find something that is egregious and untrue, it's your responsibility to try and change that. And you only have one image. And it, it's too easy today with a click of a button to soil an image that could have taken you many, many decades to really create. Jonathan uh, talked about uh, partnerships and, and knowing your customers. Jonathan, we have, you know, many of these folks are, are proud members of the Greater Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce. We've got, this is always difficult to come up with programming that works. I mean, we have 5,000 members from Princeton to Wilmington, uh, and plenty of members right here in the city of Philadelphia. But one of the things we wanted to highlight today, by virtue of Jonathan's presence, aside from, you know, the, the knack for administering organizations and motivating people is this. And while we were really in, the, in these turbulent times, this hospitality and, and lodging industry realm, for our region, what's at stake? Oh, probably five to six billion dollars in terms of economic performance and all of the related jobs and opportunity that come uh, the way of the people who work, the 130,000 uh, or so people who work in that industry. So this is a matter of making that quite clear that even in turbulent times, we've got to stay together. And I can tell you the Greater Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce is mindful of working in alliance with you as partners to see to it that that is uh, discussed and, and uh, given plenty of attention. So that's what we wanted to uh, talk about, secrets to success, whether it's for a regional economy or how you run an organization. So have a great afternoon. And again, thank you to Jonathan and, and Terry for being here.